Hey everybody, good morning. The Warp Spinster here. I thought I would just do a quick little video here showing how I'm making these crumb blocks. It's a sort of crazy quilting and improvisational quilting put together. Not unique to me by any stretch of the imagination. There are lots of good um, tutorials and videos and books out there. It's basically crazy quilting. And I just wanted to, I've had some questions from people who've seen my crumb blocks and I just wanted to show how I do it very quickly. You kind of develop your own way of doing things in style. So this is a crumb block and it's called crumbs because, and I don't know who coined that term, but it's wonderful, uses bits and bobs that you have left over from um, other pieces. They're scraps, but they're smaller scraps, and they turn into pretty small. These blocks are going to finish at four inches, so they're pretty small. Uh, crazy quilts typically would have, have larger ones. So I just want to show um, how I am doing these crumb blocks. If you're interested in crazy quilting, but you feel a little bit not quite ready to do this improvisational system, then you can check out my lazy crazy pattern um, in my Etsy shop. If you go to warpspinster.com and go to patterns, it will direct you there. Anyway, um, this these are the things that I'm going to be using. Uh, I've got a mat, a small mat that I keep by my sewing machine so I don't have to jump up and down every other minute, although that probably would be healthier for me, frankly. Uh, a ruler, this is just a 3 by 12 and then a small rotary cutter that I have. It's kind of a spare. I don't, <laughs> don't have it over at my cutting table. You absolutely can use scissors instead if you don't want to go the rotary cutting route. There are um, improvisational piecers who like to use just scissors and that works really well. I kind of actually use a combination of both. I also have some crumbs here left over from some curved blocks that I'm making for my wiggle room quilt. But I also have some other scraps and bits and bobs that I pulled out of my stash. You'll see that some of the bits are larger than others, but um, it doesn't matter, you know, there, there aren't rules to this whole thing. So let's get started on a crumb block. This is just a, a scrap from, uh, I guess I was probably doing some crazy quilting with it. And it has four sides, it's not a square. If you, I'm starting from the center and moving out. You can also go from a corner and move out. But for this one, I'm going to start at the center and this is four sides, but not a square. So the sides aren't parallel and it's not even a um, parallelogram, a rectangle, I should say. It's not a parallelogram either. And it has four sides, one, two, three, four. It's an uneven shape, which I like to start with. If you start with a square or a rectangle, you're basically doing a log cabin block, which is wonderful. It's one of my favorite blocks, but that's not what we're going for today. I like to start actually with um, five sides. Three sides, you, you still run the danger that you're gonna run into a triangular um, log cabin, which again, perfectly beautiful block, love it, but not where we're going. So I'm going to just, I like five sides, so I'm going to just snip off a side here. Um, in a pinch, that could be used in a crumb quilt. It's pretty small, but so I set it to the side. And now all I'm going to do, actually these two sides are perpendicular and I'm not wild about that, so I'm going to slice that off. So I've got this, now I've got one here. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I could have used either of those as well, but I'm going to start with this. It's actually a pretty good size center, but I'm going to be having seams on, on five sides there. So now all I'm going to do is start to build out just like I would with a log cabin, but it's not going to be that regular shape. So I just find a piece that I can put there. It's not going to be a perfect fit, doesn't matter. This is a pretty good sized piece. I kind of hate to waste larger pieces on that. Well, let's go with this 
irregular shape that I have here, this uh, piece from a curved block. Now, I always audition. The thing about this flip and sew method with crazy quilting is that you may think which you know which direction it's going to go when you fold it off. If you're a foundation paper piecer, you know this, that it tends to go exactly the opposite of what you think when you've got it right side or wrong, yes, right sides together. So I always check to make sure. Um, so if I think, say here, I want this to line up here. I don't necessarily need to, but just to show you what I, what I mean here. Now, if I audition it and pull it back, it does pretty well. If I had lined it up this way and gone that way, this is what happens. So let's start here. Now let's start on a larger side. And I'm going to line this up here. It doesn't match up, doesn't matter. And now I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam, roughly. It doesn't have to be exact, but you want enough there to um, hold the seam when you're finished. And there's gonna be a whole lot of stuff hanging out, but that's okay. I'm not gonna show you my uh, me sewing. I'll just edit that out because y'all know how to do a seam. All right, so I've sewed that seam. You can see it better over here. And I am now going to press it to one side, generally go into the dark or whatever seems to cause the less the least resistance. I don't have any seams, cross seams in either of these, so I'm just gonna go this way. You can absolutely just finger press or fingernail press or use a wooden press. I'm going to use my iron. This is my favorite iron. Nice old, doesn't have steam, which is okay, because I don't use steam. So the sole plate, which needs cleaning, <laughs> doesn't have any of those holes that can kind of cause problems. And um, it's got a good weight to it, not too heavy that it makes me tired, but it's enough weight to get the job done. This is exactly the kind of iron, brand, model, everything that I, my mom had when I grew up and was learning how to sew when I was seven years old. So I love this iron. All right, now, the next thing we need to do, you can see it's got this really funky shape. There's no straight line for me to sew the next piece on. So you've got a couple of choices here. You can do this with scissors or rotary cutter, but I'm gonna show rotary cutter. So I can, now I want to find a way that I can have a straight line to sew the next strip on. So I can trim it this way so that I'm cutting off part of this so I can line it up with that side from the center, or I can line it up here with this side and lose part of the center. You're gonna lose fabric, just get over it. <laughs> or I can do a completely different line and cut off a little bit of each. For this though, I'm going to line up with one of the center lines here, and I'm just going to trim it. Now, I could alternatively take another piece, not trim it yet, but just take a piece, and it's got a straight edge here, or relatively straight, and I could just place that across here, do a seam here, and trim it later. Totally up to you. In fact, let's do that this way. Okay, so I'm gonna just take it over to my machine and sew it. Okay, so this is stitched. I've got this extra hanging out, but you can see that I've caught all of it in the seam back here. So now I can finger press it, press it, whatever, and press it back. And I always press it back before I trim because, again, this way it looks like, oh, I can trim it right there and I'll be fine, but in fact, that's not what I want to do. So... Now I have three pieces. I can go back here now and trim it with scissors or my rotary cutter. Trim that up. That's a little more than I'm willing to do on a crumb block. Um, some people might use that, but that's a little small for me. So now I've got this 
these three pieces together now and we're on our way doing pretty well so all I'm gonna do is just keep finding or making uh, new straight edges to keep adding pieces on and I I tend not to do it in this round robin too much because then it ends up being more log cabiny than I like that's an effect that is perfectly fine in crazy quilting and your first few, few blocks may end up with that um, absolutely I still do some now and I still like them all right so this one I've, I'm gonna line it up with this edge on the the center piece and pull that off again that's a little small for me to use again and now I have another edge here I could do or I could do one across here I'm gonna go ahead and no I'm not I'm here is let me show something else here I, I could absolutely cut this here or I have other options here as well. Let's let's talk about curves. If you're first doing this and you are not comfortable with curves, then don't build in any curves. So here, if I didn't want to do a curve, I could just cut that off like that. If you are comfortable doing curves, those can be kind of fun things to do. Let me see if this curve, it actually should fit because these pieces came <laughs> from the same quilt so that I could then trim that to go along with that curve. And it's a pretty gentle curve and you're gonna end up trimming some of it off. So if it isn't all perfect, I'm gonna trim that piece so that curve would line up and I could sew that. Now, in this particular piece, I could build a curve in anywhere. And if you're used to doing curves, you know all about this, but I could cut a curve there. Let me just wing it on one here. And then also curve a piece there. Curves are not necessary in crazy quilting or crumb quilts at all. Crumb quilts, you know, are kind of, let's put something together here. We want it to look nice, but we don't want to spend a ton of time on it. So um, I've got this ready to go. Let me trim that straight. Oh, I kind of like that curved look. And now I've got another edge that I could sew on and then I'll trim off that way. You just keep building that way. Um, all right, let's put one here as one last demonstration. I need to start building some purple in. So let me do a little purple piece here. And can see that's not straight there and it's it would be okay to use that edge as well I'm always putting the little dog ear there at the end when there's an angle just so that when I flip it back that gives me more real estate to cut into when I make that straight line or that curve or whatever I'm going to do with it in fact if I'm going to do a curve I may pull that out a little more and then I'm just going to sew that and press that back Good. all right so then i could if i were going to do a curve i could add that to the curve now i've got another spot here where i could trim off along that or cut off a little more of the center in order to have more purple and then i would just start building around and around now, sometimes you will get yourself into a spot where you have um, got to a side and everything is starting to just turn into one long strip. So what I've done here instead is pre-pieced a strip and put these together at an angle. And then I treat that as just one crumb or one piece that I'm going to add onto it. In fact, I did this because I wasn't paying attention and I trimmed this to be too small. So I had to add something on and I didn't want it to look like just a, a straight line across there. So I angled it a little bit. Um, I didn't want to cut off too much of this. So I angled that just a little bit and put in a, a piece bit there. I could have added more pieces before I used that strip. So you've always got that option is to just 
piece something and then add that in as if it were a single piece of fabric. And that's basically it. Um, that's all there is to the, the crumb quilting. At some point you reach the size that you're looking for and you trim it up evenly or if you're an improv piecer you could do them as as uneven unequal sides and then you have even more interest when you put it together you just have to then deal with <laughs> that those angles as you put it together and you could treat it much as you do the crumbs anyway that's basically it you start with the centerpiece i prefer to have five sides that aren't parallel no two parallel or perpendicular to each other just an uneven penta five-sided figure and then just find a straight edge piece another piece on flip it back find or make another straight edge piece on flip it back and just keep going around that's all there is to it and it's a lot of fun you can use up scraps and really make some fun quilts that are you because you're using fabrics that you used for other products or other projects so I hope you'll give that a try. Everyone, all the quilters I know anyway, have lots of scraps and they're cloning in the closet, so it won't hurt you to use some of them for either a larger crazy quilt piece or for a crumb piece like this. Hey, I'm back for a minute. As I'm working further on this crumb block, I've come up to a piece here that's looking pretty long. This one is two. Maybe I'll do it over here. Anyway, so in order to not have just a long strip of the same fabric, I've pieced two bits together, and I will sew that so that I have this sort of Y-looking seam here that isn't really a Y seam. So that could add on to that and make it a little less strippy, or I could do it over here as well. I'm thinking I might do it over here. So then I'll just put it right sides together. I'll have to flip this however, move it wherever I want it to be, flip it back. Now this is not a perfectly straight seam. It is such a gentle curve that I could even sew that as a curve. I could straighten it out with my ruler and rotary cutter and mat, or I could just eyeball a straight line that's going to be close enough. In fact, it'll add a little interest if it isn't quite straight. And then I will also be trimming this um, before I sew that seam. So I just wanted to add that on. If you want to add a little interest to a long strip of something, just piece it and add that in. And here's my finished crumb block, crazy crumb block. And you can see that I have some fairly large pieces in here in comparison to some of my other blocks. As a matter of fact, um, these pieces are reasonably large. But I also have a very tiny crumb in here and smaller pieces. And I like that for a couple of reasons. One, just as for some quilts, you want to have a variety of scale in the prints on your fabrics for a little more interest. So you want a variety of scale in the sizes of the pieces here so that it does. I mean, that's one of the things that makes it crazy is because it's just unpredictable, improvisational, and, and I really like that. But also because when you have a quilt, you know, when you stand back from it, you get an overall big picture view and feel about the quilt. But I like to have little bits in a quilt especially in crazy quilts or these crumb quilts, little pieces of detail that the eye can find when they get up close. It's sort of a little treat for the person who starts looking closer. And they're not going to be looking at whether or not your points match here because they aren't going to match. Isn't that a nice thing about crazy quilts? So I'm um, pretty happy with this block. I've got it squared up and it will be ready to add to the mix. I wanted to add a little historical note or a name note about crazy quilts, which this essentially is. There are, you can read accounts or people who say that it's because the women who made these in Victorian times went crazy 
making them because there was so much embroidery and beads and all kinds of stuff on it. Not true. Nor is it true that this was created uh, for some for um, women who were in insane asylums at the time. It actually comes from that crackling on pottery, on the glaze on pottery that you sometimes see on pieces that looks quite a bit like that. And on pottery that's called crazing, C-R-A-Z-I-N-G. And so because this resembles that crazing, then they're crazy quilts. They may have even started as crazing quilts. I, I don't know, but that as soon as I read that, I didn't buy the whole, you know, going crazy making these quilts. So when I found out about the crazing thing, it was like, oh yes, Eureka, perfect, absolutely perfect. Anyway, happy quilting, peace out.